If you're looking to shoot lower scores this year, then one thing you'll undoubtedly need to do is strike the ball consistently well. And that's exactly what this video is all about. We've got five of the best ball striking drills for you. Now, the advice in this video comes courtesy of Jed Walters. Jed is uh, one of Golf Monthly's top 50 coaches. He's got some really simple and effective advice on ensuring that you strike the ball before the ground. Now, it's also important to say this video is coming to you in partnership with KBS shafts. They have a whole shaft range from driver all the way through the bag, uh, all designed to help you get the most from your equipment. Right, we're here at the London Club. Let's get started. This drill is all about ensuring that you catch the ball before the ground. It doesn't matter whether you're hitting a wedge or you're hitting a long iron, that's the same principle all the way through. So it's something we all need to work on. Jed, what's yep. the drill and how does it work? Okay, instant feedback is what it really is all about. So if I take a tee and I just scratch a line in the ground here. So from that point of view there, I've now, I've now got a focal point from which I can work around. So here with a long iron, that ball position is going to be a little bit further towards my lead side. And from there, it's about say, making swings and trying to get the club to hit the ball and the turf. So I want to be really brushing the line and left of it for me away. Yes. And crucially, you're not hitting the ground behind the line. That's the number one thing that you're trying yeah. to avoid. And the great thing about this drill, Jen, is I take it you're taking practice swing after practice swing after practice swing, and you get that instant feedback. Is your body working in the right way to deliver the club in the right angle of attack? Definitely. Now, obviously that will change. So if I took wedge in there, um, ball position then is going to go more central. So that can be even more, can be deeper this side here. But the one thing I'm going to find is if I was to make a practice swing here and hit the wrong side of this line, then I know that our body's back here. Right, okay, well, I've hit the ground there. Well, here's the line. Hit yeah. the ground back there. So what I'm looking for is to keep the pressure moving forwards. So that I can hit the ground more to the left. You can see there, I've hit the ground sort of way in front of the line there by just keeping the body moving in the right direction. Okay, so then you, you, you make a series of practice swings and then eventually <clears throat> you get to a point where you put the ball on the line Yes. Hit a shot and then you get the feedback of what you're doing actually in the swing itself. Exactly. Go on then. Yeah. Okay. So, in the setup, I've got a 50 degree wedge here. So, centered ball position and then just making sure that I get my body working in the right order. Perfect. Hopefully, you could hear through the mics the quality of the strike there. Absolutely perfect. And you can see. This divot is starting, I'd say, yeah, yeah. not quite almost an inch ahead. after the line. Yeah, yeah, after the line, which is exactly what you're looking for. So use this really simple drill, it will really help your ball striking. Okay, so this drill is all about controlling the low point in the arc of your swing, something that's so important for good quality ball striking. Jed, you've got a ball on the tee here. Yes. What are we doing? We're getting used to with this one just the difference in the line that we could get. On the, we practice most of our golf on a mat. On driving range, it's flat, it's the same level as your feet. You get on the golf course and it's above your feet, below your feet, it's different slopes. So the first thing we need to do is just make sure that we're adaptable and we can adjust. So we've got this one teed up here um, and I'm literally just gonna clip it off the tee. Just yeah, as it's plain as simple height, as that. Yeah. So my ball position and everything's gonna be the same, but now you can see, you know, this is what, you know, good three, three and a half inches above my feet. So I just wanna get used to being able to be a slightly more adaptable. So if this was a ball above my feet situation where I've got my normal ball position, but I'm now just adapting to the lie. I just wanna clip it away. Beautiful. Good strike. So, okay, so what's next? So what's next now is we now need to look at it from a point of view of improving the ball striking itself. So the ball goes back on the same tee. Um, and now what you're gonna do is about four inches behind it, and so you know it's not a million miles away from the length of your club head, is I'm gonna put another tee. Okay. Same height. Same height. Now the key with this is anybody who struggles sort of so fat shots, thin shots, top shots, all those kind of things. Generally, it happens because the pre the weight of the body is too far back. So we start to scoot, we start to flip. Well, first thing you're gonna do then is you're gonna hit that tee. Hit that tee. So we so, just gotta miss it. So the simple drill here is hit the ball, don't Not hit the, the tee. tee. Yeah. 
So that's going to now encourage a little bit more of a downward angle. And to have that, I've got to make sure that I'm moving my body in the right direction. Okay. okay? Simple task here then, Jeff. Yeah. Don't, don't hit the Dead tee. Dead simple. So just don't <laughs> hit the tee. Very good. Okay. And there it is. Good contact. Right. But there's a, a third There's part a third to element to this drill. So if I take a third tee and I now put it here, so it's on the opposite side around the same distance from the one that's at the back. Okay, so now what we're looking at doing is not just missing this tee, but now I wanna hit this one. Yes. Because that now is giving me the feeling of that downward angle of attack, controlling the low point, more target side. Again, we're back to being ball turf, which is everything that good ball striking is. Is, okay. Okay. Go on, so now I just wanna miss the back tee, hit the shot and try and clip this tee that's in front here. Yeah, it's a really solid contact and it's a really simple drill, that one, to just to help you establish that right angle of attack so the club bottoms out in exactly the right place because that is where really good quality contacts come from. Here's a great ball striking drill for those golfers that don't want to get caught thinking too technically about the golf swing. It can really help. Jed, yeah. what is it? So it's about trying to make a comfortable speed swing and stop as fast as you can beyond impact. Okay. What it does is it gets the body to organize itself a little bit more naturally. We play our best golf when we're in the subconscious, when it doesn't, you're not thinking about anything. So that's what we want to try and encourage. So from this drill here, it's simply just taking a, you know, a lofted club at 9-9 here. We're just going to make some swings, which only go maybe halfway back. But the key to it is feeling like the downswing, the focus is just stop. What you'll find is when you look at it from face on at this point here, I'm not really doing anything other than stopping, yet you can see how my weight's moving forward, my pelvis is tucking underneath the torso, so I'm extending, extending through the legs, through the pelvis, through the spine, and I've got a little rotation in there as well. And you're so, nicely connected between your arms and your body as well. It, yeah. it, it, what I'm looking at when I see this is just how good the impact position is. Just by doing yeah. such a, a small and just, simple goal swing, the impact just position is everything to just happen in the order that it really wants to happen. It's almost the brain which confuses it and makes it happen in different ways. Yeah. So you can start off at slower speeds and then just build up your speed and you can go flat out speed if you wanted to at this. So when you're accustomed to the drill, you could be a little bit more and get some real crispness to what's happening there. And yeah. you can see where those divots are always I can see them left of where I'm taking Where the, the golf setup. ball would yeah. be, yeah. It's just, it's developing that speed into it, but just focusing on the stop as quickly as you can. Yeah. So from a setup point of view, you're only thinking about putting a little bit more pressure into your lead foot, just almost like there, just pushing down into the ground a little bit more, keeping that pressure there, and then just making a nice controlled swing, stopping as quickly as you can beyond impact. Yeah, and you can see that divot, it's perfect. Yeah. It's just after where the ball would have been. Definitely, you can, the body position, Just this yeah. shot of Jed here just shows you so many good things about the golf swing. If you can focus on finding that position, the chances are the quality of your ball striking will greatly improve. This drill is all about swing direction. It's something that's gonna really help you with your iron ball striking. Jed, what's the thinking here? What's the drill all about? So all great ball strikers have a fairly neutral swing direction. So that's not to say that it is always, say, a bit to the right. Some are a little bit to the left, but it's minute. We're talking a couple of degrees left of target, a couple of, right, a couple of degrees right of target, not excessive, which you would see from people who would slice and hook it. They would maybe be 10 degrees to the right, 10 degrees to the left. So getting your swing direction more neutral will help you control your centeredness of strike and also help you control how your body then wants to move towards the target so you can control the ground contact to get those lovely crisp ball turf strikes. Yeah, and it sounds complicated, but it doesn't have to be if no. you have a really good drill that can help you sort of visualize what you're trying to achieve. And that's yeah. what we're doing here. Yeah. So uh, talk us through it. <clears throat> okay, so we'll look at it from sort of both perspectives. Um, obviously I've got this little station set up here. This is just as a quick visual really to what would represent 
uh, a fairly neutral swing plane of being sort of up and down. Yeah. But the swing direction is literally what the club is sort of doing as it comes here through the impact. So if I was like sort of this there, that would be a swing direction quite a lot to the right. That would be quite a lot to the left. So this is tailored relative to you as the individual. If you were somebody who slices the golf ball. Pulls it or slices it, yeah. so you're coming so, across the ball. Yeah, right? so you'd have a swing direction, which would be, if I put it into sort of a 2D visual on the floor, would be a bit like that. So right, okay, well, what you need to do is practice the opposite. So we would turn the sticks out to the right. I mean, that's probably somewhere in the regions of 40 degrees, maybe, to the right. So, right, okay, your visual then, if you were somebody who's coming here, your visual is to swing the club in the downswing between the sticks. Yeah. And then suddenly your angle of attack improves, the amount of the face you're getting on yeah. the ball improves, the quality of the strike goes up. It can, it can do Everything. so many good things for you, can't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And then vice versa, if you hook the golf ball, then you would just turn them the opposite way and feel like you were coming across a little bit more. Now, bear in mind, these are feels. What, what you're feeling and what really happens are completely different. You know, a slicer would feel like they're swinging way off to the right, and when you look at their swing direction, it's probably still a little bit left. <laughs> yes. It's just yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. if what feels hugely one way might move at eight degrees, but if you were already 10 left, then you're still a little bit left. But the, the important point is it's more neutral, so you're gonna make your striking better, you're going to make your start lines better, you're going to make your overall ball striking better. Yes, yeah, so this is one for those players who have big shapes in their game, so either big draws or big fades. If you want to just uh, rein those in slightly, you'll yeah. improve the quality of your ball striking, yeah. and this is a great way to do it. Okay, so this is a ball striking drill aimed specifically at those golfers who have a tendency to hang back through impact, hit the fat shots and the thin shots that we all hate so much. Yeah. And it's a, it's a great one for the range. Talk us through it, Jed. Okay, so on the driving range, you could use the basket that the ball's coming. It's simply just propping your trail side up. So all your pressure, all the weight goes to the lead side. You're probably gonna be talking 90 to 95% of your pressure is gonna be lead side. So that's gonna mean, well, I can't go back because I'm up on an angle. That's going to keep me there. So I'm going to get used to feeling what it's like to have the pressure forward through impact. And it's going to give you the ability then to have a nice downward angle attack and give you those lovely ball turf crisp strikes. Yeah, and that feeling of what the correct contact should feel like. So, Jed, uh, go yeah. for it then. Talk, talk us through the so drill. So, I've just it. put my bag on the ground there. Um, and all this is going to do is this is just going to help me elevate my trail foot. So from here, and bear in mind, you, know, you only need to sort of hit lofted clubs out. I'm not talking about doing this with driver, it's just getting used to doing it with like a, <laughs> yes. a wedge or a nine iron or yeah. something. Um, so just taking, you know, if that was my normal setup there, then what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take my trail foot, I'm just gonna lift it, and I'm just gonna rest it on the back of my bag. So now all my pressure is into my lead side. So from here, I'm gonna keep the pressure into my lead leg. I'm gonna flex it a little bit more than normal just because it's taking all the weight pretty much. You'll notice then on my right leg will sort of really straighten out a little bit. As you see from this angle, there's very little flex left in there. Um, keeping the pressure then pushing down into the left leg. I'm just gonna make little swings now. So it's gonna be a little half swing back and then just down. So you can see the angle attack's gonna come down. It's gonna help me find a low point more to the left. So I just need to keep my arms nice and extended. You know, I'm not going to swing to there. I'm not making a full follow through. I'm just making a nice back and through swing. So if I was to click this one now, I'm set, I'm ready, and I'm just going to make a nice smooth swing. Yeah, and, and you've got that little ball turf strike. You will really, really struggle to hit the ground before the ball if you try this drill. And I say it's, it's a great one for getting your body in the right position, get the weight moving towards the target so the club hits the ball before it hits the ground. Give it a go. So there you have it, that's Jed's five best ball striking drills. If you are having issues with the quality of your iron strikes, then give some of those drills a go. If you can find a feel that helps you hit the ball before the turf, then you should start hitting your irons much better. But that's it for now from the London Club. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.